new, new, new. What's up? Okay. Well, this is a back in stock. It's not even a revision, but I know people have been waiting like almost a year for these. The Feather M4s, which I love. The Sandy 51 chip is so powerful. This Cortex M4 processor um, and FPU, uh, it's great. We got a lot of products and projects that are using the Sandy 51 series. And we had a shipment of reels in, and so we were able to get some Feather M4 Expresses out the door. So um, they're in stock. I think last I checked, we had about 1,000 left. I don't know when we're going to get our next shipment of Sandy 51. So if you uh, need the Sam the Feather M4 for something, uh, please do yeah. get it soon. Uh, it's 10% off, too. You can overclock the heck out of this. Uh, it's a great chip. Um, so, yeah, this is your, your FYI. Next up, we have a revision to the MLX9393. Malexus was hit very hard by the um, chip shortage, and a lot of their sensors were not available. But... One version of this chip is available, and I could get a reel of chips. It's the same magnetometer, but the I squared C address is different. So I think the default used to be um, OXOC, uh, C in hexadecimal, and now it's 18 hexadecimal. So it codes all the same, the sensor's the same, everything's the same, except the default I squared C address is different. Um, I thought it was worth it to get them and, and you know even though it's annoying to have to change code examples to use a different address and it's a little confusing uh we do print it on the bags now so the bag says it's uh, address x18 i thought it'd be worth it just to get it back in stock so people could use this very nice uh, very wide range magnetometer all right start of the show tonight besides you lady Ada, our team our customers is the can feather which is also the code oh, yeah. uh so really i'm cranking out these rp2040 boards with different peripherals on the right hand side um, i always wanted a board that had can bus built in for easy plug and play no solder can projects uh, and the rp2040 uh, feather is a great place to start that so it's got your classic rp2040 chipset that's a dual core cortex m0 um, processor nice chip we pair that with eight megabytes of qspy flash so you'll use that for your program or your files that's kind of the middle top area there you've got boot and reset buttons so you can enter the bootloader and the um, reset button of course you can reset whenever you want it's got usb type c for data and uh, uploading um, firmware and debugging um, lipo battery built in uh, with battery charging through usb c so you can uh, take this project on the go uh, there's a stem qt port as well and then in the you know the feather pinout is standard it's got you know 21 gpio pins and four of them are analog and two i squared c ports and two spis and two uarts so it's got a lot of stuff going on with it great for use with arduino micro python or circuit python and then what i did is on the right hand side um i stuck a mcp 25 645 and you're like i've never heard of it yeah it's basically a chip that has inside of it an mcp 2515 which is a very very popular can controller plus a can transceiver it's just they just took those two chips and they squished it and they called it the 25625. But the firmware you'd run on it is MCP2515. Like firmware wise, what the code you'd run for this chip controller is like the most popular CAN controller. We've got Arduino code for it. There's CircuitPython. I think MicroPython also has code for it. Pretty much any programming language is going to have code for that CAN controller because it's the most popular one in the world. There's also a little, uh, switch capped boost converter um, above it that'll generate the five volts so you can do can bus with five volt power because you it's a five volt power um sorry five volt logic interface so the feather is still running at 3.3 volts but it has the five volt necessary to do the the can controlling uh there is a terminator a, a 120 ohm terminator which you can disable by cutting that trace you need at least one termination on your can bus and then uh three terminal blocks low ground and high so now you can plug into any can bus which is a differential signal system uh you have a shared ground which is handy and then uh low and high and then you know terminal screw on how many wires you want to shove in there and they're pre-soldered so it's a new thing i'm trying to get more boards where you don't have to do any soldering it's plug and play if you'd like to use it on a breadboard you can solder uh headers that comes with um I think this photo shows it yeah, we toss some headers in, but, you know, if you don't want to use the headers, um, you just want to do CAN, you're ready to go. And again, we've got Arduino and CircuitPython code. And we also have uh, U2IF, which is a software that runs, a firmware that runs on the RP2040 and allows you to use your computer 
to connect to CAN devices. So like it adds acts as a USB to CAN bridge, which is very handy. And then of course, if you want to add sensors, so if you want to make a CAN node with sensors, you have a STEMIQT port, you can plug in almost any of the many hundreds of STEMIQT or Quick or Pico Dev boards that are come with the connector. Right. No, 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 no